Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to this channel, my name is Zanele. If you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Press that subscribe button below and remember to press the notification button so you'll get notified every time I upload new content. One of the questions that I still get is, if I'm a civil engineer, how do I go about getting my GCC? Or I'm working as a chemical engineer, but I really see how maintenance is so exciting and I also want to get my government certificate of competency. So how do I get involved? This is the question I'm going to answer today. So the GCC or the Government Certificate of Competency is a certification that is awarded by the Department of Labor for factories or the Department of Mineral Resources for mines. This is a qualification or a certification that is awarded to someone who's deemed a competent person in the engineering sector. The GMR, which is the General Machinery Regulations, which can be found within the Occupational Health and Safety Act and the regulations, this is essentially where the requirement of a competent person is stemming from. The GMR calls for a facility or a site that generates power of a certain magnitude to have an engineer or a competent person A, B, C, or D, depending on the magnitude, to then be appointed as the responsible and accountable person for general machinery on site. The requirement for a GCC does exclude civil, chemical, industrial, and other engineering types. So this is for mechanical engineers and for electrical engineers, heavy current. So instrumentation engineers, those who would do software programming, um, those working with sensors and that work with programming and predominantly light current, if you don't have all your modules and the syllabus completed to qualify, you may not be able to, to then receive the acceptance letter or sit in on the exam. Mind you, this is not only for engineers or people that have gotten a degree in engineering. So whether you've got your BTEC or an advanced diploma, or you've got your N6 qualification, or you've got, got your S's, these individuals can also apply, also be deemed a competent person under the regulations. A GMR 2.1, this is a general machinery regulations under subsection 2.1. This is then the person that is appointed as the responsible and accountable person for machinery safety and for people safety as well. So there are other avenues that a civil, chemical and industrial engineer can follow. If you're studying or working in any one of those specialist fields, you can then pursue an accreditation with a body such as EXA. So PR Eng is another avenue that engineers pursue. By the way, you do find engineers that have both. So one with a GCC, this is someone who's working in factories or mines, who's working with machinery and people, with HVAC systems, with pressure vessels, really dynamic environment, and requiring to have a lot of safety precautions in place and be compliant with the law. That person or individual would then pursue a GCC because there is also legal requirement for certain facilities to have, to have such appointed people versus a PR eng, person who's serving or operating and, and working as a professional engineer. Some of these guys you find in consultancy. I've seen a lot of guys who've ventured out into starting their own companies. You see them in big corporates, you see them in manufacturing facilities as well. In design, you find a lot of guys that have, guys and girls that have their PR eng. So PR eng is not limiting. So whether you are civil, chemical, industrial engineer, even mechanical, electrical engineering fields, you can then pursue a PR eng. Although somewhat simplistic, I must call out that an individual with a PR age does not necessarily qualify as someone who's got a GCC. With the exception, you don't have to be a certificated engineer to have your GCC to be deemed a competent person A, B, or C. So if you've got your GCC and you're watching this video and you feel that you've got some expertise to share, how's it going for you? Do you find that it's a useful qualification? Please comment down below so members that are coming across this video can learn from your experience as well. If you've got your PR age and you're considering pursuing a, a, a career in maintenance or in operations, please comment down below if you feel that it is worthwhile getting a GCC or not. I, for one, will always advocate for skills development and advancement because if anything, especially in South Africa, we love the manufacturing sector and need more and more competent, qualified, experienced engineers, technicians, artisans, so we can see an acceleration in that space. Remember to share this video with anybody that you might feel will find it useful. And remember to live your best life, learn as you grow, and lead for change. Ciao.